In this video, I'll be discussing about Euler's criteria. And this criteria speaks about when I can say that A is a quadratic residue of prime P. So before I start this Euler's criteria, let me to recall what is the quadratic residue. A is quadratic residue of P if this congruence x square is congruent to A modulo P is solvable. And we where we take the GCD of A and P is equal to 1, P is an odd prime. So in that case, if this congruence is solvable, we say that A is quadratic residue of P. So considering this definition, now let us say what is the Euler's criteria. Euler's criteria is saying let P be an odd prime and the GCD of A and P is equal to 1. Then A is a quadratic residue of P if and only if this congruence is satisfied. Let us take an example to explain first this theorem and before, before we move to the proof. Take P is equal to 13. If P is equal to 13 and let me to choose A as 2. In this case, what I want to verify, if this congress is satisfied, then 2 is the quadratic residue. So, let me to satisfy this congress. Let me to see in this case, 2 raised to power 13 minus 1 by 2. This means it is 2 raised to power 6. 2 raised to power 6 is 64. So, this is 64. 64 is congruent to 12, which is further congruent to minus 1 modulo 13. Now, this does not satisfy the given criteria. So, this does not satisfy given criteria this means 2 is not a quadratic residue modulo 13 let me to take another case take a is equal to 3 in this case also i am taking p is equal to 13 if i now take 3 raised to power 13 minus 1 by 2 this means this becomes 3 raised to power 6 which is congruent to 3 raised to power 3 into 2 that is 27 this means it is 27 square but we know 27 is congruent to 1 whole square because 27 minus 1 is 26 which is divisible by 13 so this quantity is further congruent to 1 modulo 13 this satisfy the criteria this satisfy the criteria so, so we may say 3 is quadratic residue of 13 and hence this act as the criteria now let us see the proof of this theorem and in the proof the conditions if and only if so let me to take the first way the proof of this side and here i am assuming the given condition that a is a quadratic residue of p if a is a quadratic residue of p this means by definition x square is congruent to a modulo p admits a solution this is solvable this has a solution so this is given to us in the condition and let us call this as call it as x1 so we may call the solution as x1 this implies x1 square is congruent to a modulo p this is given to us what we, now what we need to prove is we need to prove that a raised to power p minus 1 by 2 is congruent to 1 modulo p considering that this is a quadratic residue this congruence hold this is what we need to prove we have also seen that we have a solution and we have considering this as x1 from here noting that the gct of a and p we have considered this as 1 in the statement itself this implies the gcd of x1 and p is also equal to 1 if not if gcd of x1 and p is not equal to 1 and p is a prime so this means p divide x1 if p divide x1 this means x1 is congruent to 0 mod p if x1 is congruent to 0 mod p this implies x1 square is also congruent to 0 mod p and from the equation number 1 from 1 we can say because x1 square is congruent to a this means a is congruent to 0 mod p and this implies that the gcd of a and p is not 1 because it is dividing so the gcd will be actually p this is a contradiction this is a contradiction so hence so this implies gcd of so hence we will take gcd of x1 and p is equal to 1 and that ensures that whenever the GCD of A and P is equal to 1, which is given in the statement, this implies X1 and P's GCD is equal to 1. So, we can apply now Fermat theorem. So, by applying Fermat theorem, as GCD of X1 and P is equal to 1, we may say X1 raised to power P minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo P. And if I simply write square and then I divide this is same quantity modulo P. Now, let's call this number as a replace this quantity as a this is p minus 1 by 2 is congruent to 1 modulo p so this means for a particular value of a which is x1 square we may say that this congruence a raised to power p minus 1 by 2 congruent to 1 modulo p hold so above congress holds this implies above congress hold 
and hence the equation star hole and star what we have considered here we have considered the statement that we wanted to prove now we prove the result conversely what is given here given is that a raised to power p minus 1 by 2 congruent to 1 modulo p holds this congruence is true this holds what we now need to prove is a is quadratic residue of p so to start the proof let r be the primitive root of p and we know that every prime have a primitive root we have done these proofs in the primitive root uh, video lectures that for every prime there exists a primitive root and also there was a result if we consider the power of these primitive roots r1 r2 up till r raised to power phi p in this case because it is a prime so the last power i am going to consider is p minus 1 they are congruent to in some order to these integers 1 2 up till p minus 1 this we have already done this means that if a and p gcd is 1 then obviously this a belongs to this reduced set which is 1 2 up till p minus 1 so i am going to use these result that we have already proved in the context of primitive roots and from here i am going to consider that if r is a primitive root of p then for some a this must be congruent to r to some power k modulo p for some integer k for some k belonging to integer and of course this k lies between 1 to p minus 1 because we are considering the power 1 to up till p minus 1 and in this case we follow now immediately that r raised to power k times p minus 1 by 2 raise the power on both sides this is same as a raised to power p minus 1 by 2 but this quantity we already know that this is congruent to 1 modulo p this is given to us this is our given assumption in this case so when this quantity is given so this whole implies this whole implies r raised to power k times p minus 1 by 2 is congruent to 1 modulo p and remember r is a primitive root if r is a primitive root this means r raised to power phi p is congruent to 1 modulo p in fact order of r order of r is phi p that is why it is considered as primitive root and if the order of r is phi p then any other order is divisible divisible by this phi p so this means i am again using the concept of the primitive root this implies phi p divides k times p minus 1 by 2 and we know so this implies k times p minus 1 by 2 is divisible by phi p this means it is phi p multiple of something let me to call this as multiple of l now this also implies that k times p minus 1 whole divided by 2 this is equal to because phi, phi p is p minus 1 this value into some multiple l of course l belongs to integers and in this case this p minus 1 is cancelled on both side and this implies k by 2 is equal to some l this automatically implies what is k k is 2 times l so we get the condition on k that k is 2 times l once we have a condition on k this implies i can write now so this means r raised to power k is congruent to a modulo p this is what we are trying to find what is r r raised to power the value of k is 2 times l this is congruent to a modulo p which implies this is r raised to power l whole square is congruent to a modulo p that itself means now we have satisfied the congress of this type x square is congruent to a modulo p now this means so for x which takes the value r to the power l the above congress is solvable above congress is solvable and if the above congress is solvable this implies a is quadratic so this implies because of this a this is quadratic residue of p so we have shown that there is a solution existing for this congress if there is a solution existing and what is a solution that solution is actually the sum power of the primitive root it is r raised to power l and from there we find that above congress is solvable and hence a is quadratic residue of p so that proves the eilers criteria
Now, ILS criteria gives us very nice corollary. It says let P be an odd prime and GCD of A and P is equal to 1. Then A is quadratic residue if this congress hold. A is quadratic non-residue if this congress hold. Let us now prove this result. What is given to us is given is that GCD of A and P is equal to 1. If the GCD of A and P is equal to 1, we can simply apply Fermat's theorem. And when we apply Fermat's theorem, we get here that A raised to power P minus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo P. And we can apply simple formula of x square minus a square which is giving us x minus a x plus a. So this expression I can further write it as a raised to power p minus 1 minus 1 congruent to 0 modulo p. And then rewriting this congress I get a raised to power p minus 1 by 2 minus 1. And on this side I can write a p minus 1 by 2 plus 1 congruent to 0 modulo p. Now these two congruents are actually with respect to a prime. So either, so this says either a raised to power p minus 1 by 2 minus 1 is congruent to 0 modulo p. This will hold. Or a raised to power p minus 1 by 2 plus 1. This will hold. And not both congress will hold simultaneously. So either of them will hold. If the first hold, so this means if this hold, this is p minus 1 by 2 is congruent to 1 modulo p. This is true. In other circumstances, we may say x raised per p minus 1 by 2 is congruent to minus 1 modulo p. We have just done now by Euler's criteria. So by Euler's criteria that we have just done because that is the if and only if condition. If and only if condition means if this congress hold, if this congress hold, then A is quadratic residue. A is quadratic residue of P. And if this holds, we may say that A is quadratic non-residue. So this means it is giving us the result for both the cases to check whether it is quadratic residue or not. Whenever A raised per P minus 1 by 2 is congruent to plus 1, it is quadratic residue. Whenever a raised per p minus 1 by 2 is congruent to minus 1, it is quadratic non-residue. So we can apply, we can see now again in that question that we have uh, did earlier. So in this question, we have seen here, whenever we fixed p is equal to 13, 2 raised to power 13 minus 1 by 2, this satisfied that this is congruent to minus 1. If this satisfied minus 1, this means this was the case quadratic non-residue. So we can see again this was quadratic non-residue and 3 satisfied 13 minus 1 by 2 is congruent to plus 1 modulo 13. So this means this is quadratic residue and hence this is giving us the criteria. Now the only difficulty in applying Euler's criteria is say if we have a bigger prime number. So if we have p over 31 and I want to check whether 2 is a primitive root of 31 or not. So this means I need to check 31 by 2 by 2. This means this is congruent to 2 raised to power 30 by 2 that is 15. So we need to check the larger power and to reduce this calculation we introduce the legendre symbol. Although we can find out these values but to reduce the calculation we involve the legendre symbol. And also note that why did we have solved this quadratic residue because initially we want in my last video we have discussed that we want to solve this kind of the quadratic congresses and to solve this sort of quadratic uh, congresses it is enough to solve a quadratic congress of this type so if we know what is this if this is solvable we can say that the above is solvable this is solvable so to solve this question we are also associating one linear congress with that I have explained this point in the last video so you can check that in the last video this means ultimately we want to solve the quadratic equation that reduces to this type of the quadratic equation in specific in that example we have considered y square is congruent to d modulo p this was the actual reduction where what is y y is 2ax plus b and what is d d is b square minus 4ac so if we can solve this congress with the help of this linear congress we can say that the solution of this quadratic congress exists and hence we wanted to find out the solution of this type of the particular co quadratic congress x square is congruent to a modulo p that is why we introduce the quadratic residue if this is solvable we may say it is quadratic residue and hence we can actually solve the quadratic uh, congress in general and to simplify all this process we can also look now what are the legendary symbol in my next video